abundance. You know, many of the prophetic words that were fulfilled, um, prophets, the prophets, uh, prophecies of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, um, Zechariah, Amos, many of those prophetic words, Joel, which were fulfilled about the arrival of the kingdom, really show a picture of prosperity, abundance, favor, grace. And so Joel 3.18 is an amazing verse. It says, in that day, the mountains will drop new wine. The hills will flow with milk. The mountains will drop new wine. Now, as it's the new month, I always love to teach on new things at the beginning of the month. One of my favorite verses is Psalms 81 and 3, blow the trumpet in the new moon. Trumpet represents a prophetic voice. Prophets announce new, new things, new times, new seasons, the new moon. Every month in Israel, they blew the shofars uh, announcing the arrival of a new moon. Their calendar was lunar based and the new moon represented the beginning of a new month. And that's Psalms 81 and 3. So I believe that it's important for prophets and prophetic people to decree and declare and prophesy and even pray for the new thing that God is doing. Many of you know one of my favorite verses is Isaiah 42 and 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And then of course, um, uh, Isaiah 43 and 19 uh, says that God will do a new thing. He'll release waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So God does do new things. And every month, I, I love to believe God for new things. Uh, whether it's new favor, new grace, new platforms, new influence, new power, new wisdom, new authority, new songs, new deliverances, new miracles, new increase. And so I want to talk about new wine. New wine is a symbol of something new. Jesus talked about putting new wine in new bottles, or you could not put new wine in an old wine skin. Um, every year in Israel, there was a harvest of grapes. There was a harvest of new wine. Uh, the vines would bring forth new grapes. They would crush the grapes and it would produce new wine. So a new wine is a picture of a new harvest, a new season. And it's also a picture of blessing and prosperity. The wine in scripture is a symbol of joy. It's a symbol of celebration. It's a symbol of gladness. Uh, it's a symbol of newness, freshness, new blessing, new favor, new prosperity. And so Joel 3.18 says that new wine, the mountains shall drop new wine. It's a picture of new wine flowing at the arrival of the kingdom, the arrival of the day of salvation. So when God saves you, you come into the newness of the spirit. There are new things that God does for you. And one of them is giving you new wine. Again, it represents a new spirit, new joy, new celebration. Wine is a, is a symbol of joy and, and gladness. Jesus turned, or the water was turned into wine at a wedding feast. His first miracle in Cana of Galilee was the water being transformed into wine. So wine is a picture of celebration. May God give you new joy, new celebration, new reasons to celebrate this month, new victories, new joy, new peace, new shalom, new favor, new prosperity, new abundance, new glory, new wine, a new move of the Spirit of God. It's a picture of revival. It's a picture of glory. It's a picture of drunkenness, but being drunk in the Spirit. These men are not drunk, as you suppose, but they were drunk uh, in the spirit. Be not drunk with wine, Ephesians. Be not drunk with wine where it is in his excess, but be filled with the spirit. So it's a picture of being filled, full of the spirit, new wine. And one scripture says, no man having drunk old wine desires the new, for the old, they say, is better. Sometimes you have to get a, a new taste for new wine. New wine doesn't taste like old wine. And you have to develop a taste for it. I pray that God will give you a new taste for new wine. That you'll have a, a taste for revival. That you'll love it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It represents the goodness of God, the blessing of God, the favor of God. It's one of my favorite symbols prophetically in scripture. You know, prophets and prophetic people uh, do a lot uh, when it comes to symbolism. And new wine, oil, 
um, olives, uh, figs, those are pictures, prophetic pictures, gold, silver, green, prophetic uh, colors, uh, prophetic symbols. And so new wine is a very powerful prophetic symbol. Often when you're prophesying over people, you're prophesying that God is going to cause you to drink the new wine, which means you're leaving the old. You're leaving that which is stale and dry. Um, it is over. Uh, you're coming into a new season. I prophesy in the month of April, new wine. I prophesy a new season for many of you. April is a, a month that represents the spring. Spring represents the arrival of new flowers, new leaves, new green. It's a picture of newness. It's a picture of new life. So it's very, very, it's full of symbolism, this new wine, full of symbolism. May God give you new dreams, new visions, new anointing, new grace, new favor, new influence, new promotions, new breakthroughs, new miracles, new wisdom, new songs, new sounds, new praise, new glory. Let it come on you in the month of April. New prosperity, new abundance, new increase, new multiplication. The number of new things that God can do for you are unlimited. So I love the new wine. Look at Joel 8, 3 and 18. Memorize it. The mountains shall drop with new wine. Begin to confess that the mountains, which represents a high place, so it represents heaven. It represents coming down. The mountains shall drop with new wine. The word drop in the Hebrew is also another picture for prophesy. <clears throat> the word drop, God told the prophets to drop the word. Uh, the word drops from heaven. It falls from heaven. Heaven drops at the presence of God. Uh, I, uh, Psalm 68. So the heavens dropping new wine represents the dropping of new prophecies, new prophetic unctions, new prophetic words. It's a whole picture of new things. As you can see, I love talking about new things. I love moving in new things because it brings freshness and strength and blessing uh, to your life. Um, it causes you to move uh, in the newness of the spirit. So let's believe God for new things, new things in the month of April and new things as we move into the second quarter of the year, into the spring of the year. Believe it, receive it. Uh, break the old stagnation, Old things that are no longer relevant, that they were for an old season, have come to an end. And again, Isaiah 42 and 9, behold, the former things have come to pass and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So let's believe it, let's decree it, let's speak it, and let's walk in it. Uh, sow some new seeds. Believe God for a new harvest. New wine represents a new harvest. Um, sow some seeds. Uh, James, I'm sorry, Proverbs 3 says, honor the Lord with your first fruits and, and, and with the first fruits of your increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. So that's a picture of prosperity, a picture of abundance. The scripture is full of prosperity and abundance and favor, goodness uh, that can come in your life. Walk in it, believe it. Don't settle for poverty. Don't settle for lack, but walk in prosperity, abundance, and goodness, and favor uh, this month and the rest of this year. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much. Don't forget, April 10th, a week from the day, Excelling in the Prophetic Masterclass, 7 p.m. If you missed the live, the replay will be available. Go to impact, the letter U, live.com and register today. I want you to be a part of this. I'm going to be talking, um, teaching on my new book, my ebook, which is also connected to the webinar. You'll get that book when you register called Excelling in the Prophetic. And that's going to, it's, I believe it's going to take you to another level. If you're in Tampa next Wednesday, I'll be at, at Contagious Church. You're welcome to come. I'll be doing the broadcast from Contagious Church and also ministering to those that are in the service, the live service. All the rest, you can view it um, online and be a part of it by registering at impact, the letter U live dot com. But thank you so much. I'm going to sign off of, of Facebook Live. We're going to continue the conversation in Clubhouse. Thank you for your seats, your donations, your support. I really, really do appreciate it. And until, until uh, you hear from me again at the same time, God bless you and double shalom. God bless.